I bet this. I bet this twenty. Oh, there's more. Ha! Ah. Oh my goodness. Oh, look at this. An El Camino, a Studebaker, a Packard, a Packard. Looks like a pickup truck. I'm Tom Cotter. The first car I found, I was 12 years old. I'm 61 years old now and I'm still finding cars. And in this series, you'll see that there are still plenty of cars left. I've been dreaming since I'm probably 12 years old about finding a car like this. at a hotel just a half mile from here when I was out on business, Northern California. And in the morning, I like to run. So I would run down this road called Pope Street in St. Helena, California, and I'd see these old cars lying around, and I'd see other stuff in the background. I said, there's gotta be old stuff here. I gotta meet this guy. So you got a Ranchero here. I chopped the top on it once. <laughs> Did you really? I mean, when I chopped it, I chopped it two and a half inches, and it was too much, so I raised it back up again. How'd you do? Did you save the pieces? To an inch and a half. Yeah. Now, would you sell something like this? Oh, yeah. Would you? I'd have to. I don't think I'll get around to fixing it. This is a 1954 Ford, and it's a four-door wagon called the Country Sedan. It's got a 312 V8 overhead valve V8, which was Ford's first overhead valve V8 after the flathead error. It's got a three-speed with overdrive, and this car is so complete down to the hubcaps, the trim, the spare tire, the jack, the air cleaner still has the decal on it. You don't find cars that are complete like this anymore. It doesn't happen anymore. Uh, I'd say this car is, you know, it's worth probably $2,000, $2,500 away it sits and restored. Uh, these can go for $20,000, $25,000 these days. So if you were handy at home, you could buy something like this, fix it up and come out cash ahead if you had to sell it. Well, pretty cool stuff here. Carload of fellas rolled into there and they had blown the engine up in it. $75 purchase. That's Russ when he was just a young guy. That's a lot of stuff going on there. This is a, a 1972 Jaguar, and the four-door version of this would have been an XJ6. This is known as an XJ12 because instead of a six-cylinder, it's a 12-cylinder. And this is an XJ12C. And the XJ12C is called that because it's a coupe. So this car, interestingly, is a four-door roof line with two doors. So they took the, the doors and stretched them and then closed them off in the back. So it's, it's basically a four-door roof with two doors. So lots of, lots of room, big door, lots of room to get in and out of, but a, a, a real rare car. This is a 65 Chevy El Camino 327. Uh, neat, solid car that uh, is a daily driver. Great stuff. bottom of the block, it's got die cast in there. The, the casting number is number one of the block that I got. The first Chevy V8? It, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, it's the first casting. It turns out that Russ Aves is one of the original California hot rodders. He's lived here for, well, since 65. He's got a Jaguar 12-cylinder. He's got a 57 Ford Ranchero with a 500 cubic inch Cadillac. This stuff is all for sale. Russ said, you know, I'm not going to get around to it. I might as well let somebody else have the fun. There's a 1954 Ford Country Sedan station wagon back there that's so complete, you don't find them like that anymore. You don't find cars with four hubcaps, with a jack in the back, with a spare tire. It's a three-speed with overdrive transmission, a 312 cubic inch V8, which was Ford's first overhead valve engine in 1954. And you know what? He said, look, I, I'd take 500 bucks for it, but I'd really like to get $3,000 for it. That thing's worth restoring. Very rare car and wagons are very desirable these days.
got into Northern California yesterday, we really didn't know who to talk to. And we just talked to a car guy who turned us onto a car guy who turned us onto a car guy. And they said, have you talked to Ricky Hall? No, we don't know Ricky. So we called Ricky and he said, come on over. So here we are in a American Canyon, uh, California. And Ricky is an old Ford guy, likes 32s. And he's gonna show us what he's got in his yard. This looks too cool. Yeah. Is it a four cylinder? Four cylinder. It's a real early 32 pickup. Man. Serial numbers show it was made, I think, early February. So there's- Of some, 32, really? Yeah, so there's some early, uh, it's got the no rib in the roof cab right here. Oh, okay. This in the rib, single pull handles. It's got the early style gas gauge, but- uh, It's a Model B. No, oh, look at that. Wow. Well, that's cool. Now, this this this, so this is a 32 just, as well, 32 yeah, four-door. Picked up last weekend. It was in Lincoln, California. Last weekend. Yep. So you found this it a week was complete. ago. I started tearing it apart this week. <laughs> I mean, are there, there are obvious still still cars like this out there, but yeah. I mean, how wh how rare is that to find a 32 in this day and age in 2016? It's, it's getting pretty hard, yeah. especially one that's untouched. So Ricky just found this car, and he you know he didn't have to you know, search through farms or ask people. This car was on Craigslist and he got it a week ago. The fact that a car like this can still be found, I mean, anybody could have bought it. And this guy lucked into to buying a 32 Ford sedan that's basically never been touched. It's not a hot rod. It's not a restored car. It's just an old car. Just amazing. I mean, guys would give their IT to this thing all over the country every day. So wow. this is a, a, a Lincoln Zephyr as a 12 cylinder. So if, if you look at you know some of the other cars that Ricky has, they're flathead Ford V8s. Well, this is a flathead Ford V12. So it's basically the eight cylinders stretched to 12 cylinders. And uh, they were smooth and quiet. And an old man told me once that you could take a nickel and balance it on the air cleaner and it would stay there. That's how smooth those engines were. Now, I didn't plan on seeing motorcycles here, but I've never seen a Sunbeam motorcycle. Yeah, that's a... Is that British? It's a B, made by BSA. Wow. What and year is that? 1947. I got that in an estate sale in Berkeley. As it is? or As is. I ha actually I had to replace the fuel tank. It was rotten. I bought it just to resell. So it's man. just something that's waiting to go down the line. Yeah. Oh, man. So this is a 32 Ford three-window coupe. If you look at this condition, I've been dreaming since I'm probably 12 years old about finding a car like this in this condition. I, I used to read Rod and Custom magazine, and there was a, a section in there called Vintage Tin, and they would show these guys in California finding this stuff out in the desert and dragging it in. I, and I was an East Coast guy, and I dreamed about coming out to California because the women were beautiful, there was surfing, there was Coors beer, and old cars. And uh, it, it only took me 50 years to get out here. Wow. Napa Valley probably is some of the most expensive, desirable real estate in the United States, if not the world. And you wouldn't imagine large, collections of old cars to be hidden around Napa Valley. Real estate's just too expensive. But we talked to a guy who turned us on to Rod, who lives in Napa, and uh, we just drove up the driveway here. And Well, there's something going on here because I see uh, a Trabant, which is a, uh, an East German car. I see uh, an old Cadillac under a lean-to, a Javelin on a trailer, an old Cadillac up on a Ramp truck, a Cadillac ambulance. I can't believe I'm in Napa Valley. This, this looks like Kansas. Now, Trabant was an Eastern German car. Tell me about the, how the body was made on that. It's a composition of uh, recycled cotton and paper. <laughs> Each of these cars have a story. Oh, every car has a story. And you know them? Yeah, I do. Oh, man. This was bought 
new by the Department of Justice, Washington, D.C., and assigned to Southern California during the Reagan administration. It's a bulletproof Cadillac limousine. No kidding. Well, you see what happens when they do the bulletproofing. They have a reinforced concrete they pour in the doors, and of course it causes the rust to happen from the inside out. See the, what the window is Look at this. Out. One, two, like three panes of glass, or one piece of plexiglass, two panes of glass glued together. And these windows can't go down. They can't go down. Because no. the doors are filled with concrete. <laughs> That's amazing. So what does this car weigh? About 9,000 pounds. Nine. Extremely heavy. <laughs> I got, all right, we're gonna see, I'm gonna identify what this car is. Don't I tell me. If you 20 guesses, you'd probably still get it wrong. All right. I'm pretty good at this now. All right, look. Finish. I'd say an Italia. It's Italian. It's an Italia? Intermechanica Italia? I'll be doggone. <laughs> I'm You're good at good. this. You're good. You're good. You're <laughs> good. So this had a Ford V8 in it. Some had Chevys, yeah. but this had Ford V8. Yeah. Look at that, yeah. I, I was after this Mark II um, just because I, I thought it was nice enough to, you know, pick it up and uh -huh. work to Lincoln, white with red interior, air conditioned car. There weren't too many with the air conditioned options. So this is the fully optioned Mark II. I'm handing the money. He's handing me the title. 95 year old guy selling his cars and he's retiring as a pharmacist. And he tells his son that's 70 plus years old, go get the picture back there because Rod's going to want to see this picture. Brings out the picture of him, Elvis Presley, and the Lincoln. And it says, Man. have fun with the car, Elvis. Okay, now, we know that Elvis had a, car, a white Mark II with red interior, air-conditioned car. But we also know that there's one in the Elvis Presley Museum that they say was his car. Maybe not. Maybe not. Huh. This is, uh, this might be the holy grail here. Holy mackerel. Look at that. See, there's a photo here and a photo here that is no longer there. It says 1956 Continental, 1977, I guess it was on display. Wow. Ha! Huh. There you go. We spent a morning at Rod's house here in Napa Valley where some of the most expensive and desirable real estate in the United States happens to be. There's wineries that sell bottles of Cabernet for hundreds of dollars just five miles from here. But tucked away in little corners like this and even a place like Napa Valley are great cars. They're happy hunting. Uh, uh, uh.